Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and this is my video review of the G.I. Joe vehicle, the Cobra Fang Helicopter. This is the 1983 Cobra Helicopter, the Fang, which the box says is a fully armed negator gyrocopter, so that's what Fang stands for. And here it is. It was produced in 1983, 84, and 85, and was discontinued in 1986. Um, and it really wasn't replaced by anything in 1986. Um, there were some other Cobra small aircraft, uh, like the Claw uh, powered glider and the uh, flight bubble, uh, the flight pod, but the Cobra helicopter that, that sort of replaced this uh, didn't come out until 1987, the Cobra Mamba. This was one of two uh, Cobra vehicles to come out in 1983. The other one was, of course, the His Tank. And throughout the entire run of the uh, G.I. Joe toy line, there were, n there were never as many enemy vehicles as there were G.I. Joe vehicles. Um, there were a, really a lot of G.I. Joe vehicles released in 1982, uh, and those vehicles were re-released in 1983, uh, and then uh, even more vehicles were added to the G.I. Joe team in 1983. But these were the only two real Cobra vehicles that we had. More Cobra vehicles, of, of course, came out later. Uh, more, larger, better vehicles, I guess you could say, but uh, these were the, um, the primary armaments of the Cobra Army. And even though the Cobra vehicles were fewer in type, you were meant to army build these uh, or get multiples of them uh, and so that you could have an entire army of his tanks and Fang helicopters. Of course, I don't know of any kids uh, whose families had enough money at that time to buy a whole set of these. So usually we just got one and we'd have to pretend that uh, one tank and one helicopter was really an army. Let's take a look at the box that the Fang helicopter came in. Uh, and this box is not in great shape, but it will serve our purposes. It's got a picture of the Fang on on all sides. This one was it still has the original price sticker on it. It was four ninety six at Kmart in nineteen eighty three. And we've got some really nice box art. Uh, a nice picture of the helicopter and on the back this guy is worth two flag points. You were encouraged to cut these flag points out and send them in for some special mail away offers that you could get, uh, things that you couldn't get in the stores. And here we have what is supposed to be the toy uh, actual size when assembled. So just out of curiosity, let's uh, let's see if that is the actual size. Let's see what size comparison. That's uh, it's, it's it's a little bit larger in the picture, very slightly, but that's close, close to actual size when assembled. This box, unfortunately, is pretty rough. I have uh, it, it's missing a side here, and what I've done is I've taken a uh, basically a small U.S. Postal Service flat rate box, and I've slipped it inside there to help the box keep its shape. Uh, and I may eventually, you know, custom cut some cardboard uh, to slide inside there to just help hold this thing together. Let's look at some differences between the uh, art and the photography on the box here and what we actually got in the toy. Because there were some differences between the toy and the information on the box. I think one of the most notable notable differences is the change in the housing here on the shaft that connects the propeller blades 
Uh, this was apparently added later. It's, it's not on the photograph uh, on the back either. And I think one reason why that might have been added is because uh, these, um, these shafts here are very fragile and are often broken on these Fang helicopters. In fact, I have a spare Fang helicopter would, in which this is broken, and I've had to kind of repair it a little bit. So uh, that's one difference. Another minor difference is the color of the ball turret here, which in the box art is black, and in the actual toy it is uh, kind of a, a gray color. These are minor differences though. The box art is really pretty good, a nice representation of the toy itself. Now the artwork on the box has the Fang helicopter being piloted by the Cobra Soldier, and like so. Um, I can't put the Cobra Soldier's hand on the joystick because this is the straight arm version. I don't have a swivel arm Cobra Soldier at the moment, um, and you would really need a swivel arm really to uh, have him pilot this using the joystick. Um, but I disagree really with uh, ha with the choice of the Cobra Soldier on the uh, as the pilot. The, really, the darker blue doesn't provide quite enough contrast with the black of the helicopter itself, so the the figure doesn't stand out very well. I really like to use the 1983 swivel arm Cobra Commander because I think his light blue uniform really provides a nice contrast with the helicopter itself and um, and looks really good. Let's get you in there Cobra Commander. There we go. And since he has a swivel arm he can reach over and he can grab the joystick and fly the aircraft. I'm not the only one who thinks that this is an appropriate choice as a pilot. The instruction sheet in the section where it shows how to place the figure in uses the Cobra Commander action figure, the same one that I'm using here. Now let's look at the parts of the Fang helicopter. It had propeller blades, uh, which in the original box, these were separate and needed to be assembled, snapped on here. It has, it has four red missiles, which the instruction sheet calls heat-seeking air-to-air rockets. I am not going to take these missiles off because they are pegged in there with these very thin slots going into very uh, very thin pegs here they're actually really hard to get on um, and they're also really close together which means getting one of them on with the other one already on is very tricky because you end up knocking the one off as you're trying to put the second one on it's, it's really frustrating also, since the uh, slots are so thin and the uh, pegs that they go in are so thin and narrow, these rockets are susceptible to cracking. And, and you can see on this lower one that uh, we have some cracking on here. So I'm just going to leave those on, at least on this one. I will take the rockets off of my spare Fang helicopter to show you what I mean. See those little pegs right there are meant to go in this is really a mess here, but these really tiny little slots front and back. Uh, and I can tell you that's these can be really frustrating to put on and to keep on. They also had stickers, uh, and these stickers often come off. Uh, in fact, um, missing 
a sticker on that top missile. And it's because the, the sticker is meant to stick on a, a rounded surface here, but, um, but it's a flat sticker, so it, it, kinda, it can come up at the edges, uh, get some dirt and crap in there, as, as this one has. Uh, and uh, over time, they want to peel off. Underneath, it had the negator bomb, with a nice cobra symbol on there. I think the cobra sticker is supposed to normally go um, vertical rather than horizontal, but whoever owned this before put them on that way, which is fine. And this one is a little bit easier. It pegs in with a much larger slot on the bottom. I don't know exactly what a negator bomb is, or how it is different from a regular bomb, but there you have it. Another part of this vehicle is the so-called roll bar, or this sort of red cage around the uh, engine. And these are often missing uh, or broken, and unfortunately this is an example of a broken piece. Um, these are unfortunately really too hard to find, harder to find than you would hope, uh, intact. So if you're lucky you can get a Fang helicopter that has one uh, still on there and if you do I would just leave it on there uh, because those have been known to break quite often. Another part that is susceptible uh, to breaking is the propeller shaft uh, and often right here at the base where it goes into this this housing here. Uh, that breaks quite frequently and in fact my spare Fang helicopter is broken there and I've done a slight repair on it. It's um, held together with a pin that I put in there uh, which allows it to still rotate a little bit but uh, but it's very fragile and I don't want to mess with that too much. I'm afraid that it'll break further. But in as much as the propeller blades are intact, it spins pretty freely. Nice easily spinning propeller blades. And that of course was the main feature of the helicopter was the propelling, uh, spinning propeller blades. The other really prominent and important feature was the front ball turret or bubble turret gun, which the instruction sheet calls a 30 millimeter rapid fire cannon. And I am going to assume that this is some kind of machine gun and not a laser. With the exception of the 1982 character Flash, I'm generally opposed to lasers on these vehicles, which is one of the reasons I was a not a great fan of the cartoon series, because of the excessive use of science fiction weapons, where some real-world weapons really would have done much better. So this is, to me, a, a machine gun, not a laser gun. It had a spinning propeller blade in the back, which is a nice touch, but um, I don't know of any kid back when, you know, when these were out and uh, played with who had to keep that blade spinning while playing with the helicopter. Even so, it's nice to know that you can. Now, looking at the Fang helicopter overall, we have a really nice color scheme. This vehicle is not painted, and really most of the Hasbro G.I. Joe uh, vehicles were not painted. 
any kind of color scheme that it had uh, or color interest came from just using different colored plastics for the parts. And so the red roll cage, the kind of gray um, bubble turret with the red gun and the red rockets contrasting against the black helicopter really make it look good. It's, it's a really nice colorful design without any kind of paint job. Let's take a look at the cockpit. It's a pretty plain cockpit. It does have a sticker inside with some instrument panels on it. It has this single joystick, which uh, is probably quite breakable, but I've found a lot of Fang helicopters that still have the joystick, so apparently it's not as breakable as you might think. There is a back peg to fit the in the holes of the back of the action figures to hold them in there. And if the back, back peg were not there, the figures probably would stay in fairly well, but I can see why they added it. It is an open cockpit, and so uh, it, they probably are more susceptible to the figures falling out than, for instance, like the Dragonfly helicopter, which had a closed cockpit. So this is just for a little bit of extra security to keep the figures in. It has a ridged seat. I, I guess these are supposed to be cushions of some kind. Uh, and armrest, which I think was a missed opportunity. If you take a look at the box art, the Cobra soldier here flying the helicopter basically has his left arm resting on this uh, comfortable armrest here, whereas they could have molded in some extra control instruments here and it would have worked I think a lot better than this sort of lounge chair look. The skids are all also often broken so be careful with these skids but they have these foot pegs where you can have the figures ride on the on the skids using the holes in the their feet for the foot pegs but these foot pegs are pretty thick kind of like the dragonfly helicopter and so I would just not try to force uh, the figures feet into these foot pegs and just leave them for show um, I would be concerned about cracking the heels of the figures, trying to force them in there. Uh, they are rather thick, so uh, even though theoretically you can have two figures ride on the outside of the helicopter, I, I would just leave that feature unused um, just so that you don't risk breaking an action figure. Let's take a look at the engine detail. Some nice engine detail there and a great big exhaust port on the back, which when we were, we were kids, of course, we would pretend that this was a jet engine so that the helicopter, of course, could fly at jet speeds. Uh, and really, if you look at the box art, that's what it looks like. It looks like a, a jet flame coming out the back there. Now, as I said, this is the only Cobra helicopter for a while, at least until 1987 when the Cobra Mamba came out. Uh, and so it was kind of a, a rough time for Cobra in the air because they had to go up against G.I. Joe's 1983 helicopter, the Dragonfly. And I could compare the two, but really there's no comparison. The Dragonfly is really bristling with 
guns and missiles. It's a two-seater helicopter with a special feature of the spinning propeller blades with the, the trigger that causes them to spin. Um, it's really a much more impressive toy and a much more impressive machine of war than this very small open cockpit single single pilot Fang helicopter. The Fang does have some missiles and this single turret but uh, I'd, I'd, it would be tough to for the Fang to match up against the Dragonfly in the air. I think the only hope that the Fang would have is to have a whole fleet of them attacking the Dragonfly at once. That's about the only way the Fang is going to have a chance. That's my review of the 1983 Cobra Fang helicopter. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I, and if you are thinking of getting a Fang helicopter yourself, I hope this review was helpful to you. Thanks for watching and watch for more videos in the near future.